Motown, Motor City, Hitsville, a ghost town, the murder capital, the D. Everybody got a name to call it. For me, it's just Detroit, the place where I was born, the place where I'm living. Who am I? My name is Ade Mango Henderson Maynard. On wax, they call me Mr. Day. In the English language, a ghetto is a bunch of people that are the same, that live in the same place. After World War II, ghetto has meant a bunch of poor people together living in close proximity. And to that extent, even further, it doesn't even mean a bunch of people anymore. It means a bunch of black people living together in poor conditions with no hope for the future and no idea of how to get there. That's what the ghetto is. Look like a goddamn bomb hit it. All this was families. Look, gone, 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 gone. Now tell me where else can you see that? Now, when I say I live in the ghetto, I live among these people, my people, but I don't think a lot like most of them. And I don't have the ghetto mentality and we might and I've had more opportunity than a lot of them and that's where the class thing comes in I have no concept of starving my parents coming home drunk I don't know about any of these things because I didn't experience them and this is a common occurrence in the ghetto and when I was a kid I used to want one of these buildings I fantasized about having one of these buildings and having a studio with maybe a loft in one of them when I was a child, you know. People used to work here. People had all this was jobs. No, nothing. For sale, for lease. All this was the first floor plan. Um, that went out, the first one that went out of business. And right here, 200,000 people used to work here, and now they don't have a job. And that's the beginning of the end. Come on. Okay, we're gonna go. All right, Ken. Okay, Ken. Bye bye. Granny, a kiss. Bye bye. Here, take this. I grew up uh, with my family very close by, so it was kind of like growing up with a blanket over you all the time. We were um, we weren't rich, but um, my family's very hardworking family, so uh, we 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 survived and lived. And uh, it was a lot of love in the house, and um, it kind of enabled me to pursue my dreams. Come on, give me my kiss. Right where his verse starts, that's what I want. Right there. Right there.
Um. So what we gotta do now is make song structure. This magazine came from Japan. Here it is. Oh, that was in your mail? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. But it says something down here in Japanese. Yeah. He's explaining something. Because <laughs> he was into it. He was just going to talk. At first, I thought he was eating, but you could see he was talking about something he was into. I got in the, the music business at a very young age. Well, not the business of it, more so just music because it was always music in the house. My um, my grandmother was always playing the piano. My mothers and my uncles would be singing. Uh, my father, when I was at my father's house, he would play uh, soul music and jazz music uh, in, in the background. So the earliest I remember, I liked it. And the, the minute that I could get up on the piano stool, I was playing music. So every year, he would add something, he, you know, from the time he was little, he would say, okay, mama, I need a drum machine. I need a whatever. And the first time he went to the studio and had to hire somebody to do the mixing and the, what's the, the, the man, engineer. Of, the engineer, he said, mama, he said, I watched that man and he not doing that much and I'm not going to pay him all that money to come up there. and." and he said, all I, need me is, all I need is a book. So he called around and found out where a book was on that machine that the man had, was using, the engineer was using. And the next time they needed the engineer, he was the engineer. I mean, I never really told this part of it. The engineers used to talk over my head because I was black. You know, they figured I couldn't learn it. So they would tell me anything. If it was a paying customer, they wouldn't have told them about how to engineer. So they would talk over my head, and I, act, I actually had an aptitude at it. So I learned it. <laughs> I, I learned how to engineer at a very young age. And by the time I was 16 years old, I was a sound engineer and an up-and-coming young record producer. So. I, I still don't understand it. I don't see how somebody starts making music in their house and then go all over the world with it. It's still a mystery to me. I never made our day go to work for me because he was kind of clumsy. <laughs> he, was, he was stumble over his feet, and I was scared he would fall off a roof and break his neck. You know, so I hope he made it in his music. So. All right, no, no, you're going the wrong way. You're going the wrong way? Yeah, yeah you'll be too close to the edge. Put it oh. right over here. Right in this corner. Okay. I grew up in a house seeing my grandfather uh, call his own shots. So I knew it was, a, I knew that was an option. Have your own business. That's definitely an option. I don't think I never looked at it like I'm gonna be like grandpa and have my own business. I just knew that I didn't have to work if I didn't want to. But at the same time, my grandfather always instilled in me that I always had a home. So even if I failed, 
I had somewhere to go to. So I never had a fear of failing, which allowed me to follow my dreams. Weather-wise out there, not too bad today. No rain in the forecast for the first time in a few days. Sunny skies throughout the afternoon, and temperatures expected to get into the mid-70s. <laughs> went through a divorce with, with Sydney's mother. And um, during this time, I had been uh, not sure about if I was going to leave it done, you know, totally leave her mother. So I made, and then I made this music. kind of mellow and a bit depressing in the beginning and then it progresses in the middle and it and then it's it's uh this high pitched voice which kind of reminded me of screaming but basically the Sydney song and I called it the song for Sydney and I apologized to Sydney before the first hook it's something only I would hear and now I've told you that you would listen for for leaving her mother so in a lot of ways, the Sydney song was a release, is what I used to be able to walk away from that marriage. to do to it today? You just gonna study them? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, study what we gonna do, I guess. Go ahead. Well, I figure maybe you work on the words. How was the lunch? Fine. The empty pot. All right. Well, how many did you study? Study this. What you mean, just one word? No, I had to study all of them, and I'm on this one. So Sydney good. made me change everything in my life. I had to change my life upside down, and now I'm so used to her, uh, the system of it, you know, I couldn't fathom another way of living. Spell higher. Eight. G A H E S. 
I mean E R. Slowest. S L O W E S T. Happiest. H A P P I E S T. Use higher in a sentence. I am higher than you. You do better. Use higher in a sentence that shows that you know the meaning of the word. You want me to use higher in a sentence to give you an example? Okay. Our apartment is higher than the people walking on the street. Now you use higher in a sentence that shows that you know what it means. Higher. The sky is higher than apartment. Oh, that was a little bit plagiarism on what I was doing, but I'll take it. There's so much coming at her, even at seven, eight years old. There's so much coming at her that she's trying to process it all and act accordingly. And the way that you act accordingly is to act like the other children. Now, the problem with that is that the other children might not be acting the way that's going to be successful for them in the future. And those things, that's what I try to teach Sydney. And, you know, I try to instill in her the love of reading, um, the love of knowledge, to learn why certain things are the way they are so that she can understand them other than just, you know, memorizing some fact and purging it. So. Those, if, if you know, those are the things I, I really try to teach her more than anything. And compassion, you know, people don't care about any each other anymore. Here in Detroit is a it's one of the most racist places in the United States. I feel because the people are mostly are mo so segregated. The city of Livonia, which is one of the most white cities in the United States, and Detroit being one of the most black cities, I think it's like the second or third largest black city in the United States. They're right next to each other. So the problem with that. 
anytime you have a people that don't know about the other people, if you had no contact with black people except for watching them on television, or if you have no contact with white people or Mexican people or whomever besides television, then that breeds racism. And so that's what we have here. And it's not overt racism like you saw in the 60s. It's more of an attitude, I feel. I know what you're about. I know that you don't like me because I know you because I know every white man on television. Submerge is a growing business. I watched it grow from uh, the basement of uh, our family home until the place where it is now. And it was all because uh, Mike and uh, several others, you know, they believed in the music most of all, but then they believed in themselves and they really have worked hard to make things what they are today. Submerge is a good example of how the people of different nationalities, different backgrounds, different ages, different philosophies, different religions can get together and do something positive. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think that speaks to, you know, whatever uh, uh, a group of people uh, set aside they, uh, uh, discrimination and uh, their personal thing. If they set that aside, I believe they could do whatever they uh, desire to do. Huh? No, I understand that, but we wanted print with that label. So, you know, it, it would it would have to be something, you know, we, but we can't remedy that without further expense to us. You see what I'm saying? All right, that's cool. I can, I can live without, I can live without Bush. I can live without Aunt Jemima. But, you know, you don't care about the minister, Louis Farrakhan. I think he's funny. Okay, well, we lost, we lost Bush. We lost Aunt Jemima. Mainly because Bush is current. What, oh, you should answer Aunt question. Jemima, the president cannot be on any artwork. Any president? Any president. Damn, I was going to say, man, you could have put, like... George Washington. Because it's trademarked. Yeah. So, we need a generic all-black woman. Submerge was established in 91 by uh, Michael Banks and Krista Robinson. So Mike had the idea to unite all the pressing activities of Detroit in one unit. He called it Submerge because it's underground music. And uh, so then they started managing uh, paying the press and plant, shipping the records to the distributors, and it evolved from that. <laughs> That's when I got involved. Me and Michael has always been friends since the early 90s. And so we kept in contact, and it was a situation where we could come together on some business. And that's when I got involved with uh, reorganizing, submerge, you know, putting my twist to it. So. We uh, restored this building from uh, what you might consider a dilapidated state. It was a rough road, you know. Just everybody uh, just is really happy with the work we did. And they surprised to see that uh, some guys like us was able to pull a thing like this off. As a matter of fact, they made jokes about us and uh, what they do now is they call us together as a group, the ghetto engineers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we the ghetto engineers. I 
What's up, guys? Hey, how are you doing, Jamie? Hey Frankie. <laughs> hey, I need these two records, man. Huh? It looks good. Okay. It looks good. It looks really good. That's it's just first new new out. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's just tight. Yeah, it looks good. I didn't see. I didn't see the. Um... Remember, you were like, I want to hear. You're oh, like, what yeah, is yeah, curve yeah, yeah. tech? Oh, What's curve tech. Hey Frankie. Yeah. I need this record, man. This uh. You need what? That the record with the stealth bomber on it. Stealth bomber on it. Spirit here submerged is real good. It's it's basically uh, we're all family, even though we all come from. Uh, we kind of all got brought together between uh, Mike and and Krista, and uh, everybody else is you know from around the Detroit area. But we're all like a family. Who works here. Everybody's working here for uh, for the love to work here. You know what I mean? And the spirit's all good. We all help each other out, and it's uh, it's a good place to work, man. It's a good environment, community, you know. See, in the old days, back at the old location, yeah. we were right on top of each other, so they were listening to it or mixing it right up under that administrative right, right, part. Right, so I don't right, hear right, that right. as it's being it done time. or right. tested or you know right. here with the downstairs. I don't hear it. Uh, yeah, I thought it was the stove bomber. There you go. Man. Aquanauts. You guys all like music? Yeah! Okay. Well, there's been a lot of music, popular music, that has come from Detroit over the years. I bet all of you know about Motown, right? No. Yes. No? You know, well, some of you do? Okay. Well, it was before you were born. Uh, but this is another kind of music that originated in Detroit. And it originated just in the last uh, 20 to 25 years or so. Motown Records was the biggest, most successful for its time, and I don't know, maybe the most successful ever black-run operated record company. They uh, broke number one hit after number one hit. I mean, they were the, I mean, they the greatest thing ever for uh, soul music uh, by Motown being founded in Detroit by Detroiters and the catalyst being in Detroit with Detroit talent that the the system of it would have remained but the fact that is is business decisions and things that have happened that has uprooted that industry out of here and that's gone it's gone when they when they left it it left with them when the industry changed you guys say techno techno Okay. Music. How many of you guys are familiar with the techno sound? Raise your hand. Everybody be careful. The Detroit uh, Historical Museum was brought an idea for a Detroit techno exhibit, historical exhibit. And so it's good for school children to see that it's all these guys in, they, they went to the same schools they went to, grew up on the same streets that are traveling the world and that are doing all these wonderful things and making this music from nothing and uh, have all this business and stuff. And it, it, I think it's exciting for a child to see. You know, if I had been a kid that saw the techno exhibit, I might have would have got into it much differently. If you look at the scene over here, you can see how many people from all over the world come out to enjoy the Techno Fest that's held at Hart Plaza every year. And like I said, it's going to be held this weekend. You'll have a lot of different entertainers, a lot of different opportunities to hear the creators of the Techno sound. I can submerge to Motown in the sense that a guy on the boulevard 
can walk down the street, ring our doorbell, and get and have an opportunity, you know, and get a shot to do anything, to have his, have, get a record deal or get uh, his label signed or get distribution or sign a booking agreement and get flown all over the world as a DJ. You know, these, these professional services are uh, available to him more so than they w were to me. Cause when, you know, when I first started out, it was nowhere I could go. I'm very proud that I'm a part of something that offers so much opportunity to people, you know, definitely. Brandon Calloway, um, he actually made the best demo tape I've ever heard, ever. And immediately, I said, I want to sign him. I got to meet him. And um, he came to the studio, and he was 18 years old, 18 or 19, something like that. Um, uh, Green, I mean, he... Um, he hadn't been anywhere. <laughs> he he didn't do anything, you know, nothing. He had just got out of high school, and um, he would just like hanging up at the studio. So, um, in a lot, in a way, I adopted Brandon. You know, as like my the little brother, another little brother, and so he had been with me ever since. We first came through here, so we got Molson. This is how we get down we, from day one. Well, but we got Molson. Brandon, what you want to drink? Hey, man, uh, I'll walk with you. You know, I'll give me some milk and cookies. He came back to this bitch with milk and cookies. Milk and cookies. Milk and cookies. I couldn't believe it. Chip Ahoy's. Damn. And milk. That real shit. And then now, then they gonna try to man, fuck y'all. I'm going back to my old self, dude. I'm going back with the milk and cookies. Dude. You know, he real, he close to me. You know, he like another, I got five brothers, but he like another big brother than me. You know, he showed me a lot about uh, life and music, so. <laughs> Good afternoon, you're listening to 90.9 FM, WDTR Detroit. Just a quick, quick announcement. Thunderstorm warning issued for Macomb County, and that is issued until 7.53. This is 90.9 FM, WDTR Detroit. Brand new track from those wonderful people over there at Submerge. The track is called Do It To It. Do it to you satisfied. No, just do it to it. Renaissance. You know what? Let's quit talking about it. All right. Let's just hear. All right. Got drills on 
45. Most of the musicians I know, they have a good livelihood. They enjoy what they do. They do the kind of music they like to do. They don't have a big record company over them telling them the kind of music to make or telling them where to go or playing the gig they don't like to play. They're doing exactly what they want to do. So they live in their dreams through an avenue that me and my partners have made. So I'm, I'm happy with it, yeah. But most musicians have to get a job, a real job, and do music as a hobby. I remember when I was little, it was the 80s, it was real wild around here, as far as dope and stuff, so I, I looked up, I seen a lot, I seen a lot of money, I done seen a lot of people get shot and shit. But I, don't, I didn't want to follow that road. I always had a love for music since I was little. So I, I always stuck to that. When I turned to, when I got, became a teenager, I got turntables. Then from there, I started producing and I stick with music. That's what I like to do. But some people uh, might like to play basketball. Everybody not into the wild shit, but you do got some that's into the wild shit. And they out here doing their thing. I don't fault them for it because I just, like I said before, it's, how they, it's what they saw. And you know what I'm saying, sometimes, and I don't even know if that's making your own choice at that point. Because if you done seen that all the time and that's all you know, that's what you're going to do. If you around that all the time, half going to school, your mom at home drunk, smoking crack or whatever, you're going to either sell it or do the same thing. So, But it's a lot of people doing a lot of positive stuff out here too. You know what I'm saying? Because I stay out of that. I do my thing, you know. And I like to just stick to the music, man. Life is when you watching breaking news and on the breaking news you hear heart breaking news and every day the breaking news ain't changed. Big man made little man checking his chain, checking his chains, then made him checking his brain. They say the streets rock hard, not a ground is thing. But who's to blame? For over in Iraq, a big bomb went off and six troops got shot. This war is senseless and it must be stopped. Still asking ourselves why two cops got shot. Or why did he do it? Was he mentally influenced? Young, black, and wild, probably gone off the fluid. And on the news, a big house burned down. When they dug through the ashes, five kids was found. The cause, a space heater, cause they didn't have heat. Gas prices sky high, got ends to meet. And at my job, I can't even get a day off. But this news lady talking about citywide layoffs. The prisons in the playoff stick to the real stuff. Little girl hit by a big Marshall Fields truck. That's life.
nothing gets through you, okay? You are a wall. You got to give it up, because if you don't, the other guys will beat you. going to 17 and uh, it was uh, an experience that I carry with me uh, for the rest of my life because uh, uh, just seeing the things that I saw was uh, was traumatic uh, to say the least because uh, you know you would expect that that kind of thing would only go on in the movies but I actually uh, lived through the tanks going up and down the street uh, the National Guard uh, actually shooting people down in the streets uh, people uh, actually uh, just burning and pil pilfering, uh, just going in, the, just uh, the city, it was pandemonium. And uh, the outbreaks that followed that didn't get the national or international exposure like the riot did, but uh, in fact were, uh, if not more serious, as serious as the riot was. I don't think the riot that happened in 67 could happen again personally because I think, I really do think that black people, even poor black people, feel generally empowered in the inner hood. They, in the hood, they feel that whether by illegal business or by whatever scholarship or by something, by by stealing, by some kind of means, they're going to overcome one way or another. Individually, they don't look at it. I don't think it's as much a community spirit as it was during that time. And you definitely have to have a community spirit to riot. To riot. So I, I don't think it would happen again because I think people have too much of an individual attitude. You know, it, it would be more of an individual that gets upset and uh, does something crazy than a group of people or the entire community because I don't think that we identify ourselves as a community anymore inside of our hearts. You know what I, I forgot to take out with the turkey? Checking you out, girl. Daddy. 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 Shake it, baby. Daddy. 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 Is a joke. I mean, when you start talking about events, black events, it's uh, black history. It's no such thing. It's, you know, it's like a, it's like a, a Sasquatch or something. It just doesn't happen. So no, we didn't learn about the riots in history. I learned more about the riots listening to my parents, grandparents, speak about it than I learned in the history books. And I, yeah, education is important, but. Um, more important than education is understanding and being taught to learn. People just take everything that's, that's taught them, thrown at them on television, in the media, and they don't want to learn it. So I think the home has to be improved for things to get uh, better. People have to pay more attention to their children. Yeah. 
Detroit, to me, is a city that, you know, I don't think it's a beginning or an end to it. I know it started someplace, uh, and maybe it will end someplace, but it's an ongoing, it's a change, and it's, a, it's steadily evolving, you know, into one thing or another. Uh, I see things as being more out in the open as opposed to uh, back in the day when I was, uh, say, maybe 67. It's going to be slow and gradual for the city to come back. I do believe it will come back. I don't think it's going to come back the same way it was. I think what I'm more interested in than the exterior of Detroit looking the way it looked would be the attitudes of people to change. You know, um, if that can happen, then then the you could always paint a house. But if the inside is burnt out, how good is it? Most definitely I could live outside of Detroit, but I couldn't live too far from Detroit because I couldn't live too far from my family. It's a lot of talent here, so it might be bad for business for me to move somewhere else. So, you know, it's a lot of factors that keep me in Detroit, you know, most definitely. This city is where my heart is and where my soul belongs. I wouldn't change it for anything. <laughs> 